In this series of videos, we're going to talk about job order costing. In our first video, I'm going to explain what job order costing is and some of the um, sort of qualitative elements of job order costing. In the next video, we'll walk through a long, comprehensive problem on job order costing. But let's get started. So, in our previous video series on preparing a schedule of cost of goods manufactured, we learned that any product cost is the cost of the material, the labor, and the overhead. And what we said was we add material plus labor plus overhead together and we get the cost of the product. Now we also said something very specific here. We said material and labor are very easy because at the time we make the product we know the actual amount. Overhead though is not so easy to deal with because it has to be estimated. And let's think about what material and labor are. So let me think of it, I'm going to give an example of, of making a hamburger. So if I'm making a hamburger, the material, the direct material that goes into a hamburger is stuff like the meat, the buns, uh, maybe the condiments, the ketchup, the onions, the pickles, all that stuff. But meat and bun is basically the, the main direct material of a hamburger. The direct labor is the cost of the wages of the person who actually prepared the burger. It's not the wages of the, the shift supervisor. It's not the wages of the manager. It's the wages of the person who prepared the burger. So wages of, I'll call it front line worker. And that's the guy who made the burger. The overhead cost that go into a burger are things like, well, you got to have power to heat the grill, so we're going to have some sort of utilities cost. Uh, we've also got to have either, if we own the building, we'll pay property tax, or if we rent the building, we'll pay rent. Let's assume we own the building. Well, we, we have to have a building to have our kitchen in, and, and if we own it, we'll pay property taxes on that building. We also have indirect labor, not direct, but you know the time that that employee who makes our burgers is standing around doing nothing. Idle time is indirect labor. The supervisor who works by the grill that watches the employees and makes sure they're making the uh, burger right, that's indirect labor. Indirect labor are indirect costs that occur in the kitchen or the factory or the place where I make my product. Uh, on the same line, we could have indirect materials. And indirect materials are costs of the products that we use up to make burgers, but they don't actually go in the burger. So a real common example here might be cleaning supplies. You know, cleaning supplies, absolutely you need them to run a kitchen, but you wouldn't want them actually in the product. It's not a uh, part of the, the material that goes into the product. So here's a, a few, but there's a lot more types of, of MOH costs as we'll see. So the meat and the buns, you can immediately determine what the meat and the buns cost, and I'm gonna you know, think about a McDonald's burger, probably their meat and the buns cost them maybe uh, 50 cents, maybe 25, let's say 25 cents. Can't cost them too much for the meat and the buns because, you know, they do it on such a mass scale. Uh, the labor costs, okay, in Canada, in BC, our minimum wage is around $10. Uh, per hour. Let's do a bit of math here. Let's assume a burger takes three minutes to make. Okay, so the wage is ten dollars per hour. One burger is three minutes. So a bit of math here. Uh, one burger is three minutes. Three minutes out of sixty minutes in an hour is... Uh, did I do that right? Five percent. Yeah. If you go 3 divided by 60, you'll see it's 5% of an hour. So if I get paid $10 an hour and 3 minutes is 5% of that hour, I, I take 5% of my $10 and I go, okay, 10 times 5%. This isn't really critical to the, the problem, but to make one burger costs me 50 cents in wages. In other words, 3 minutes worth of somebody's time at $10 an hour costs you uh, 50 cents. Three minutes is fifty cents. Six minutes is a dollar, and you know, uh, an hour is ten dollars. So this person's wages to make one burger costs McDonald's or whatever the company is fifty cents. So fair enough. You know, it's easy to track. You can say, okay, this person worked on the burger. They worked for three minutes. That cost me fifty cents in wages. This burger took twenty-five cents worth of meat and buns and condiments and all that stuff. That's twenty-five cents. The overhead, though, 
how much utilities went into that bird? How much power went into that bird? How much property tax went into that bird? How much? How many dollars worth of cleaning supplies went into that bird? Way harder to track. These factory costs are way harder to track. And so what job order costing says is, use something called the predetermined overhead rate. And what do we mean? Well, don't take utilities per burger. Let's take utilities for the year or for the month, most likely for the year. So we're going to say utilities for the year are, for example, $10,000. Property taxes for the year, uh, $4,000. Indirect labor for the year, uh, let's say $15,000. And indirect materials for the year, let's say a thousand dollars. So I add up all of my overhead costs, and in a real company there would be more than this, and I get a total, and I say total estimated MOH. My total estimated MOH here, the total of this list is thirty thousand bucks. So I estimate my overhead. And you might say, okay, well, I got 25 cents of meat and buns, 50 cents of wages, and $30,000 of MOH. That doesn't make sense. That's not, you know, my MOH cost per burger. How do I decide how much MOH goes into a burger? Well, the answer is I estimate based on some base. We, we make an allocation base. And, and it's a little bit complicated, but you'll see it's... it's uh, Difficult to explain the first time. Once you've practiced this, it's not that hard. Um, so we can estimate MOH, and we say, well, what, what drives our MOH? What's a driver for our overhead? And the driver might be very common examples. I'll give you three common examples here. Direct labor hours. If we have a very labor-intensive job, we might say, okay, the more labor I have, the more overhead I have, the less labor I have, the less overhead I have, and so on. The driver might be machine hours. And that's very common if I have a machined product. Uh, you know, I, I say, okay, the more machine hours I have, the more indirect costs I'm going to have, the more MOH I'm going to have, or the less machine hours, the less overhead costs. Uh, and another one you often see is direct labor cost. And so again, kind of for the same reasons as direct labor hours, the more I spend on direct labor, the more I should have overhead, theoretically. And so what predetermined or what um, uh, job order costing says is we're going to use this formula. We're going to use something called the predetermined overhead rate. And I, I abbreviate overhead always as MOH, manufacturing overhead. And that formula is estimated total MOH divided by estimated base and whatever the base is for applying overhead. So in this case it might be labor hours, machine hours, or labor costs or something else. I'm going to just make one up. I'm going to say it's labor hours for our company. And in the company's management gets to choose uh, whatever, or probably their accountant gets to choose whatever they think is uh, logical. So I'm going to say, okay, our base is the estimated total direct labor hours. Okay, so I've given us our estimated total overhead, $30,000. Uh, I haven't given an estimated base, but why don't I give one now? Our estimated base is going to be direct labor hours, and I'm going to say during the year, uh, I project that we're going to have, uh, let's say, 15,000 direct labor hours. And you might say, well, how do I estimate that? Like, how would I figure that out? Well, you just add up your employees. You say, okay, these are my frontline employees. This is how many hours they're going to be working. And you get their estimated labor hours. So I'm saying I'm going to have 15,000 direct labor hours in my company for the year. So now I have a rate. $2 per direct labor hour. Great. $2 per direct labor hour. Well, what does that mean for my burger at the beginning here? I've said, okay, my burger's material costs are 25 cents. I've said my burger's uh, labor costs are 50 cents. What about its overhead costs? Well, its overhead costs are $2 per hour. And we said a burger takes three minutes or 5% of an hour. So what's 5% of $2? That's how much overhead cost needs to land on my burger. So 
Let me just change pens here. Uh, hmm, where is it? Draw. There we go. Uh, so if I have two dollars times five percent, I get zero point one zero. I get ten cents of labor cost going on my burger. So my materials cost twenty five cents. My wages cost fifty cents. My overhead cost ten cents. The total cost of my burger, one, two, three, twenty-five plus fifty plus ten cents. The cost of my burger is going to be seventy-five, eighty-five cents. Now, I fear that I overcomplicated this with my, my explanation. And, and the real purpose of this video is to illustrate the idea of predetermined overhead rate. So I want you to focus in on that. Material and labor are really easy to deal with, and they're not controversial, right? You just say, okay, how much actually did I spend on the meat that went in the burger? How much did I actually spend on the buns, the condiments, all those direct materials? Direct labor, again, uncontroversial. How long did the person actually sit making the burger or whatever product I make, the widget? It doesn't matter. The overhead, though, these are things that you can't just sort of say, okay, how much, how many dollars worth of power went into the product? It's, it's hard to do. Like, it doesn't really directly go into the product. And that's why they call overhead indirect costs. So job order costing says, okay, well, let's apply overhead. Let's estimate our overhead based on this thing called the predetermined overhead rate. The predetermined overhead rate says estimate your total overhead. So we add up all of our overhead costs for the year. In this case, we got 30,000. Estimate your total base or your total allocation base for overhead. In this case, we said, okay, it's our labor hours and we're gonna have 15,000 labor hours. Again, these numbers are all made up off the top of my head here. So we have $30,000 in estimated total overhead. We have a 15,000 uh, labor hour base. It means we're gonna apply overhead at a rate of two bucks an hour. Going back to our original burger, our burger took us three minutes to make, 5% of an hour, like three minutes out of 60 minutes, that's 5% of an hour. So if it cost me $2 per direct labor hour, 5% of $2 is 10 cents. My burger is going to eat or share or have allocated to it 10 cents of overhead. Again, the 25 and 50 cents, easy peasy. It's going to be given in accounting questions. The 10 cents, that's where you got to do your work. Um, a total cost of our burger then is 85 cents. So we know when we charge our customers $1.50 for the burger, we know how much money we're making, right? We know our markup over cost. Cost is so crucial. A lot of times when people think of their cost, they only think of the material and the labor. They forget to think about the overhead, but the overhead is critical. Uh, in our next video, we're going to walk through the journal entries of a job order cost system.